world order is in transition, and we think four furies of geopolitics will determine the shape of things to come. In this last of our Four Furies video series, I'll discuss connected asymmetric threats. What do we mean by this? Well, by connected, we mean connected to each other, the degree that militant groups have instrumental relationships with, for example, transnational organized criminal groups for fundraising and weapons procurement. It also refers to the fact that militant groups are sometimes directly involved in criminal activities, both traditional ones like kidnapping for ransom and novel ones like cybercrime. We also mean connected to the internet in the sense that this has become a key domain of activity for organization, recruitment, facilitation, and fundraising worldwide, and perhaps even survival in the sense that Islamic State's retreat from Syria and Iraq will be as much online and global as rural and insurgent. And lastly, we mean connected to the global commons in the sense that whatever their ideological differences, non-state actors all have access to the same information and increasingly operate within the same parameters and domains. Asymmetry, meanwhile, refers to the shift in targeting towards public spaces and other soft targets, the adoption of less predictable and more opportunistic tactics to thwart security countermeasures, and, of course, the growing potential to leverage the cyber domain for a range of malicious activities. As a result, the threat to many businesses is increasingly indirect, which requires a shift in thinking about the threat landscape and how to respond. Now, in general, this transition between world orders has been perceived as a moment of opportunity to attack weakened and delegitimized governments and recruit from a larger pool of disaffected young people. In the US and Europe, of course, long-standing right-wing populist movements have entered the political mainstream, bringing in tow a fringe of violent extremists who see an opportunity to influence policy and government. In Greece, meanwhile, the left-wing extremist group responsible for the IMF and other letter bombs in 2017 have been poaching left-wing government supporters, particularly among anti-government student demonstrators. Greece is actually growing significantly this year for the first time in a decade, but youth employment is still nearly 50%, and the economic crisis is dragging on. For these actors, barriers to participation and entry have been dramatically lowered. First, ideology is overt and pervasive. Take the Islamic State. Not only is its whole canon on the internet and updated regularly, it has been helpfully translated into your local language. New material is cheap and easy to produce, does not require elaborate institutions or territorial control. The same is increasingly true of right-wing populist movements and their extremist fringes, particularly those pursuing mainstream political power. Second, tactics have been open sourced. For example, since 2011, there have been at least 12 plots and two attacks involving pressure cooker bombs in Western countries. Previously, this tactic was associated almost exclusively with post 9-11 conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. But in 2010, Al-Qaeda published fairly detailed instructions in one of its online magazines for making such a device, and those instructions appear to have been used in many of these cases. Homegrown extremists have also, of course, acted on guidance for making pipe bombs and conducting vehicle and knife attacks. And this is spreading from Islamist extremists to other ideological types of groups. The community is global. Communications platforms, encrypted messaging, and social media have enabled a degree of global outreach and networking that was previously prohibitively difficult for many extremist groups, giving them global reach. And consistent with our overall assessment of global cyber threats, which get inexorably more sophisticated each year, it is only a matter of time before ideological extremist groups successfully weaponize sophisticated malware and exploits circulating on the open internet or purchased on the black market. Now, many of these are actually new threats to business. The capability of hostile non-state groups to act globally is a relatively recent phenomenon. The capability of so many to do so across different domains of business activity, travel, information, finance, operations, is even newer. And we continue to see fragmentation of the non-state threat landscape, suggesting that connected asymmetric threats are likely to be a growing concern for many organizations.